Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things and I'm ending up this little series on doing first extrudes and then rotates or revolves using Inventor with this and then with math. The problem is use quaternions to rotate the point 100 30 degrees, that's a positive 30 degrees which would be counterclockwise about the Z axis. And I've set up here all on the same layer so I'm going to go ahead and draw my axis here. Right, we got your typical red, which is X, remember, and your Y, which is green, picking that up, back and forth here, Y, which is green, and Z, of course, is standard blue. Now, later on, you'll figure out that this is our global coordinate system, our world coordinate system, and everything itself feels its own little coordinate system. We're looking at a point here, I'll go back to yellow, that is right there at 1. I can go back to here, back and forth, there, and you're going to see, you're going to know the answer. If you rotate this 30 degrees about the z-axis, you should know the answer basically by basic trig you know that this is going to turn out to be if you think about it it's not going to rotate past 45 so it's going to be somewhere around the square root of 3 over 2 in the x and 1 half in the y and 0 in the z so you do things like this you do problems you know the answer to or some logical answer so you can test method so let's now go about doing that you're going to do it using the quaternion mathematics of the sandwich product. And then hopefully the next one you do after this will be not so easy of a description of the rotation quaternion. So the first thing we're going to remember is we're going to actually need to determine, determine the quaternion. The quaternion used to rotate. And it's two things the determinant is the unit vector of the axis, unit vector of the axis of rotation, and the other one is the angle, I'll do it like this angle of rotation. And the unit vector of the axis it's the z-axis, so its unit vector would be 0, 0, and 1. And the angle of rotation is 30 degrees, which is the same as pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 3 being 60 degrees, because pi equals 180 degrees. All right, so now the next thing is the term that the quaternion used to rotate, and the quaternion is going to be the cosine of alpha over 2 in the real and then a vector which is going to be the sine of alpha over 2 times the unit vector. So the vector. And so this is going to turn out in this case again this is why you start to learn the concepts of memorizing the unit or the unit circle down to every 15 degrees so all of a sudden when you're trying to rotate 30 but you need 15 you can recognize this as more x than y or the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4 and this is going to be a vector that is basically looks something like this if you would 0 0 the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4 and the way we end up doing this is we just stack this one up on top here so that's what our vector of rotation is going to look like and our point is going to look like this this is our quaternion it is the real portion and the vector portion and the point looks like this right zero zero and one and up here we just go ahead and add a zero to start and so we're going to use that math right now as I go through the erase and the kind of concept of the sandwich product now is to set up two grids. And the grids are there purely so we can do the hand calculation and go back to the whole lattice method. So I'm going to set up a grid here. 
and then another grid here. And in a second, I'm going to kind of think about the colors I'm going to use in a little bit. All right, we've got four components. So there's four components there. We've got four components. One, two, three. Bad case of not straight lines. Smooth Draw is a great program, but it does not have a line function. So this is going to be my quaternion and my point. And this is going to be the conjugate of the quaternion. And that's going to go up here. The, the product in here is going to go to there. So that's why you call this the sandwich product. The point is kind of sandwiched in the between the quaternion describing the rotation and the conjugate of the quaternion. So again, the quaternion describing the rotation is going to have a real value, and that, of course, was the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Right, and we're going to see, we're going to end up bringing that down with this kind of a check mark in a little bit. And then it had the values of 0, 0. I'm going to go ahead and give them color, even though they really don't have any values. So the fact that this is 0 in the x, and this is 0 in the y, but then the z, we remember, because it's the z-axis, is going to be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. That's what goes in here. And the point, if you remember, the point we decided was we're going to go ahead and put a 0 in the real. And in the end, it makes no difference really what you put here. Later on, you're going to see there's other values you can use for that real to describe something else about the point. And then the point was 1 in the x. Back and forth here. It was 1. I'm trying to figure out how this color thing works. It's not always working so good. 1 in the x and 0 in the y and 0 in the z. Remember it was the point right here on the x-axis in 3D space. So it was 0 there and to finish off the color and 0 in the z. So we have in the end I'm going to x out anything that's going to be 0 so all these are going to be 0 and all of these are going to be 0. Now the rest of these are going to be have a magnitude and then a vector attached and this is a real times a x value right so the only ones and these are going to be 0 2 so there, this is going to have a value and that's going to have a value and this is a real value times an x or an i value so this is going to be an i value real times i is going to be real times positive i is positive i and so that's going to be red right so this is going to go and it's going to become and this one is going to be j times i, k times i, which is going to be some value of j. So we're fine with that. So we're going to go ahead and mark this one up now. I kind of lay this out. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. I apologize for the color. But when we get a value out of here, we know it's going to be a positive, not in the real. The reals, no reals came out of this. If you think about this, this is also there. So there's not going to be any real numbers. So the real here is going to be 0, as we might expect that. So we're going to go ahead and calculate here. Again, the lattice method is set up for just this type of thing to, from the get-go. You're breaking numbers into various components or pieces. And each of those pieces, sometimes it's a straightforward calculation. A real times a real is a real. But in this case, you're going to have different component direction. So remember we said this is the case of a real times an i and so it's going to be an i or a red direction. We're going to go ahead and grab this. Remember red is the basic x direction in most of CAD. And so this becomes a square root of 6 plus a square root of 2 over 4. So I'm going to kind of see if I can put that in here. The square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4 that's a real value and this other one is going to be now k times i which is going to be j so it's going to be a positive green direction 
you need to keep track of the positives and negatives when you do this it becomes an I times a, uh, a K times an I is a J but a I times a K is a minus J so this is going to be a positive green value and it's again going to be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4 and finally we know that there's no K component so we're going to go ahead and grab this and fill that in as being a zero. Now we should have actually done this beforehand, but the conjugate of something is just a negative. It's the vector which multiplied by this vector um, gives the vector length squared. And so what in effect that becomes is just you flip the signs on the i, j, and k components. So that's probably not the best explanation, but in this case, we'll go ahead and use it. We're just going to go ahead, and this is still going to be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. And we're just, for now, we're going to put, remember, this is x out for 0, and this is 0, and this is going to be the square root negative to this. So it's going to be the minus this value, and we're going to go ahead and pull that up, put it in blue. And I think this would be hopefully the last time I do this. So this is going to be, I'm going to put a negative out in front. It's going to make it easier for some of you to see, I think. And this is going to be minus the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. Some might recognize that's the same as the square root of 6, 2 minus the square root of 6. And now we're going to again do our zeros. So this zeros, these are all going to zero out when they go down because of that zero. And these are going to zero going across because of that zero. And these are going to zero out going across. But you're now going to have components right here, 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 and here. And when you think about it, in the end, you should have nothing that's, you should have no K involved because this is rotating in that plane. So we'll see how this works out. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and think about the easy ones are the ones here, where you have x plus y times x minus y. So that's going to be 6 minus 2 over 4. So this is going to be 1, isn't it? Do you see how this is going to work out to this squared minus this squared? over, I'm sorry, over 16. So this is going to be 1 fourth, isn't it? So this is going to be 6 minus 2, so that's 4 over 16. So this is going to be 1 fourth. Now let's think about what its color is going to be. It's going to be green and it's going to be positive because it's a real times a K or a green component. And getting used to these colors is a great way to go back and forth between math and CAD. So this is going to be a positive one fourth. Right now we're going to think about here, we're going to go down and this is also going to be pretty similar. And if you think about this is going to be the same thing but with a negative. Now this is red, so I times K and I times K is a minus J. So a minus j, this is going to be, first it's going to turn out to be minus 1 fourth, but because of this being an i times a k, it's a minus j. And so we're going to stick the minus up here, and all of a sudden we see our green components emerge to be 1 half, which is what we expected. Now what we have to look for is, in fact, does the green, I'll go ahead and put the fact that there are no k components there, now let's figure out what happens with these two. Now you want to work this out and do it because you're testing on something you know the answer to. You knew the answer if you rotated the point 1, 0, 0 about the z-axis, rotated 30 degrees. You know that it didn't turn past 45 and you know you're on the unit circle so you should be able to quickly come to the fact that those points are square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Now when you do it in this case with the quaternions, you should be able to start to extrapolate out to more complicated calculations. So this becomes, if we would, this is going to be an I component as we would expect. I'll keep going through the typical 15 minutes. And this is going to be 6 plus 2 plus 2 times the things between them. So it's going to be 6 plus 2, which is 8. 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2. And I'm going to go back here. 
it's going to be a positive x, so it's 2, 6, plus 2, which is 8. So 2 over 16, because you've got the square on the bottom. And then you've also got 2 times the square root of 12. And let's think about that for a second. 2 times the square root of 12 plus 2 times the square root. And that's where I'm going to kind of fizzle out on this video. And I won't fizzle out, but I'm going to go ahead and work it off here on the side. So let's just think about that. This here is going to be in an i direction, and it turns out to be 6. We square the first, 6. We square the last, plus 2 and then 2 times the 2 multiplied together, which is 2 times the square root of 12. Believe it or not, that's what that turns out to be. That's why you start learning algebra and start learning x plus y is x plus y quantity squared is x squared first plus y squared plus 2xy. So we have 6 plus 2 plus 2 times xy which is the square root of 12. So that is going to be in a positive i direction. And this last one down here, and of course that's all over 4 squared. This one here now is going to be the k direction times the, which is the j direction, times the k direction, which is also going to be i, I think. So we are looking at j, which is j, which is the y, times k, is going to be a positive i, so this should turn out to be positive as well. But he's got a negative here when you think about it, so that's going to conflict things. We have the same thing. We have 6 plus 2 the square root of 12 plus 2 all over 16, right, which is what that turns out to be. Now, except it's all negative because this is j times k, which is positive, and then this becomes a negative here. Now, does that work out? I don't see it working out, but I'm going to stop the video and then fill in the explanation um, after I go through the math here. So we had these ones worked out, but in this case, we know what we're supposed to be ending up with. We're supposed to be ending up with the square root of 3 over 2. And in this case, if we actually have a negative here, and where we're missing is this is minus and minus, so we will be okay. By the time we know that this is minus minus, this becomes um, x minus y is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So this is a minus here, and so by the time you get through with that, you get 4 the square root of 12 over 16, and I think by the time that works out, it'll be the square root of 3 over 2. So I'll try to do a better short job of the pure calculation in a better format, but realizing that you work problems that you know the answer to and get a better, more spread out format. I'll try to work on that again. So the way you do a quaternion multiplication is you figure out your quaternion, which is determined by the axis of rotation and the angle of rotation. Said quaternion being cosine of the angle of rotation divided by 2. And then also the sine, which is real. And then in a vector format, the sine of alpha over 2 times the unit vector of the direction of the axis. And then you use the sandwich product by putting the quaternion here and its conjugate here. And then putting your point in by starting with zero in the real and the point coordinates in the i, j, and k components. Doing the calculation, feeding it into the next, the second part of the sandwich product and coming up with your final answer. Once you do it with a point you know and another point you know, you start with doing it with points you don't know the answer to, you draft them out, you start to trust, you abstract, you program, and you move on. There's a lot to do with robots and satellites. And so if you, you're not going to be hand calculating these any more than you would be hand calculating long division once you move beyond the high stakes tests. Thanks for listening.